Okay, so I'm here with the Kitty X Max 3. We're still on the search for a large size next generation printer that can print at both incredible speeds as well as incredible detail. We tried out the K1 Max, did not work out for us. We're gonna try out this guy instead, the Kitty or the Kitty Quitty, I don't know. It has a much bigger build volume than our typical X1 from Bamboo, so we're gonna see how it prints. We're gonna try and print out some helmets on it. Right now, though, I'm gonna try unboxing this massive thing. Really, I haven't done a lot of research into this. I just heard that it was good from a couple friends and went full send on it. Got one now, so we're gonna try it out, see how it compares to the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon that we love. We're gonna compare it to the K1 Max, which we hated. Uh, we'll see where this one falls. I don't even think I'm gonna be able to fit everything on screen. Oh my lord. Let's just get hacking away, I guess. Okay. Nope. Nope. It's a good thing these things aren't just for show. Okay, we got some tools. We got some rubbers, the feet, instruction manual, ethernet cable, and some generic Allen wrenches, a nozzle, cleaning needles, and some spare screws. Oh. And look at that, a cute little tiny uh, scraper. And a tiny little uh, USB stick. 16 gigs, that's pretty good. You guys, this thing is so big. Uh, I'm gonna have to clear some room. Okay, yeah, that's heavy. I think on the box it was marked as uh, like 35 kilos. So it's around 70 pounds. <laughs> Well, let's see how she looks. <laughs> Look at all this bubble uh, packaging. <sighs> okay, well, it looks like you guys first saw the backside of it. Oh my god, that's so freaking heavy. Okay, got a little thing up top here. It's probably some kind of lid. Got some kind of box in there. Oh my gosh, guys. I don't think this thing will fit on my typical printer shelves. 330 millimeter build volume. Look at that. That's bigger than even uh, our CR10 V2s. Flexible build plate. That's always nice. Might actually have to look at the instructions for this one. I know. I'm a embarrassment to all. First impression is that uh, she's real big. Real, real big. Might be too big for my current <laughs> printer setup. Uh, the door, it's plastic. Pretty basic, but uh, the assembly it seems mostly solid. I mean, might just be going off how heavy the printer was, but it seems a plastic body with some aluminum uh, side casings. Overall, not a bad uh, presentation on the first printer. I'm gonna have to uh, move this to a place where I can plug it in, and then uh, we'll see how she goes. Okay, here we go. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it just barely fits. <laughs> oh, goody. Okay, let's set her up. So I got it all set up. It wasn't too hard to set up. It went through its auto bed leveling. It had a little, uh, it had a little sheet that you gotta like manually level it at first, but then it does all the other points automatically. It also included a dry box uh, to like store your filament spools while they're on the printer. Pretty cool that they included it. I don't know if we'll use it because we go through filament so much. I could see this just getting in the way and 
not really offering much benefit, but uh, I'm gonna try printing without it for now. First test, as always, is the Benchy. So, uh, oh, what's this? Open the top cover and keep it ventilated. Yeah, I've got the top cover. Uh, we just left it off. We're printing in, I, I assume this is PLA. Don't want it to get too hot. We'll see how long this says. It says it'll take 17 minutes plus all its bed leveling. Uh, so we'll see how it goes, see how it turns out. So we've had some time to test out the printer. The first thing that we printed was a classic Benchy. Came out with their own filament and it came out pretty good. It took around 17 minutes to print, which speaks to the speed that uh, Chidi has promised for this printer. From there, I wanted to try out some of our different filaments, like the filament that we usually use on our CR10 V2s. Just as a comparison, it didn't do great. It got a few prints off, like I printed the Captain Enoch dome as well as the uh, face plates in that Xyltec PLA. And it came out fine. Like uh, we printed at 0.16 layer height, same as the bamboo printers, but the Xyltec filament isn't built for high speed printing. And so you can kind of tell in such ways that the filament is hard to remove because I'm assuming that it doesn't cool fast enough. And so some of the layers might used together, maybe. I was kind of expecting that. The bamboo printers didn't do too well with uh, Xyltec filament either, but what I wanted to try was the bamboo filament that we know is good on bamboo printers. We wanted to try that on this Chidi Max 3 to print this Mando helmet. And I'll say it came out way better than I was expecting. Uh, printed the whole helmet in one piece, which is exactly what we're looking for in a printer this size. It printed it beautifully, very fast as well. I believe it only took around 21 hours or less than a day. I know that for a fact. And to be able to print full-size helmets like this in less than a day and in one piece, it's a dream come true uh, for printers of this style and size. But that's kind of where the good feelings ended. I wanted to try printing some other parts in that bamboo filament. And I started the dome of Captain Enoch again just so I had a good comparison. Should have watched it a little bit longer because what happened was the print did not stick to the build plate. There's no like LiDAR detection on this printer. It'll just keep going as long as it has power. And it kind of like destroyed itself <laughs> trying to do so. So the print came unseated from the build plate started shifting around, we started getting a whole spaghetti mess. During that, it actually broke off the cooling fan, or the cooling fan cover <laughs> of its own hot end. Not only broke it off, but stripped the wires that uh, <laughs> connect to the power source. So I wasn't even able to uh, plug it back in or like reseat this fan and fan cover. I'd have to strip down the, the leads on these wires again and manually insert them into whatever uh, terminals they connected to. It made a whole mess of the hot end. It had a gloop of filament on it and there was filament everywhere. And mind you, we discovered this coming to work one morning and seeing this printer door here opened and the bed was like shifted out of place and almost falling off. Uh, it was a huge mess. That's kind of why I have mixed feelings about this printer. Uh, we have seen what it's capable of, and honestly, it is great. This helmet has already been kind of smooth. We're already working on it, but out of the gate, it came out beautifully. It made smoothing out this helmet to prepare it for painting and all that so much easier and so much faster. So there is a light at the tunnel, and I'm trying to reach it, but as far as replacing all of our printers out there, I don't think we're going to be using this Chidi X Max 3. I won't say it's a bad printer, because it does exactly what you want it to. You'll want to use high speed filament with it, either like bamboo, like we tried, or Sunlu or Elegoo, some other filament manufacturer that specifically makes filament for high speed printing. This is a good printer. It's just maybe not good for us and good on a large scale. I haven't even touched on all the slicer issues, not issues, but just complaints, I guess. Their stock slicer is uh, not good. It looks like it came out of the Windows XP era, but I was able to get Orca Slicer. I was able to get that on this and I was able to get Bamboo Studio to work uh, for this printer as well. I did have some problems with the internet connectivity. It would connect fine and all that, but it would reset itself every morning. So every day I would have to reconnect, retype in my Wi-Fi password if I wanted to print over Wi-Fi to this thing. So there's a lot of other issues that uh, didn't sell this printer for me. I think it could be a good printer for an individual, but 
For us at the shop, we are trying to replace around 70 CR10 V2 printers with around like 20 to 30 of these next gen printers. And I would not want to manage a print farm of 20 to 30 X Max 3s. Again, that's just our personal use case. It is probably wildly different for all you people out there watching. But if you run a print farm yourself, maybe look elsewhere. Honestly, after this printer failed, I bought three more bamboo printers just because I, we love them so much. We bought three more X1s and about two weeks later, I bought three more. So we'll have nine bamboo X1 carbons. <laughs> totally overkill, but they each perform so well and I haven't had a problem with the six that we have set up so far. We're still waiting on three, but again, just please bamboo, larger scale printers, please. Big build volume. That's what we like. But until then, I'll probably just wait for something from Bamboo and try and make it work on their X1 in the meantime. Now, I did reach out to Chidi Support about returning this printer and like the, the self-destruction that it had and explained it all to them. They said like, yeah, well, uh, it's a problem that is fixable. So as long as you pay for shipping for it back to us, we'll refund you no questions asked. I'm like, that's fine with me. They were a lot more understanding or they didn't try and push me off as much as Creality Support did, which is a, a good plus. So if you have any problems with your Chidi X Max 3 printer, I'm sure that you'll be able to get uh, some good support from them. Like I said, good printer for maybe a personal use if you have one or two printers. We are not going to be using it for our print farm. We're not going to get 30 of these machines, but you can get some good prints off of them, but maybe just keep an eye on those first few layers like I should have. Learn my lesson, but in general, even if that didn't happen, the overall user experience and Clipper as a firmware itself, I'm not a huge fan of. Even without that catastrophic destruction, I probably wouldn't have settled on this printer for the rest of our print farm. The search continues or the waiting game continues for a larger scale bamboo printer. Still, that's the best option I'm seeing. If you guys have any printers that you want me to try or that you think could compete with the speed, quality, and uh, dependability of a bamboo printer, leave them down in the comments for me. I'd love to try out another one in the meantime uh, until bamboo gets off their butts. Thank you for watching again. I hope this video was informative to you and I hope to see you in the next one. Oh, this is a big printer.